Hello my little beauties, it's David Connolly, the web developer extraordinaire, and Agile is bullshit. By the way, what do you think of the hair? I have a little bit of just for men here, a little bit of just for men here. But apart from that, and my camera's freaking out, can't figure out what the lighting should be uh, doing. But, um, we'll see if I can fix the lights. Yeah, I, I think I've uh, discovered a cure for hair loss. A cure, uh, and apart from my just for men here and here, I don't have any product on. I mean, I've got all sorts of powders and potions and everything. Sometimes I've used them, but in the end, the thing that worked required no drugs at all, no special shampoos, um, coming to think of it, no product at all that you either consume or put on your hair. I do believe, ladies and gentlemen, that I have discovered a cure for hair loss. I'm six, it's a serious statement. And I'm about 65% sure. Those of you who are members of the channel, you will know precisely what I've been doing because I'm very upfront about this. Uh, but I don't know what to do with this information. Should I sell it? Should I do a little, I don't know, course or something? I don't know. In any event, yes, I have found a cure for hair. Well, I'm about 65% sure that I have discovered a cure for hair loss. Anyway, that's for another day. Apologies for my phone, I'll switch it off. So I want to talk a little bit about um, Agile. I want to talk a little bit about Agile. And Agile is indeed bullshit. Now, to, well, first of all, for anyone who doesn't know what Agile is, let me give you a super quick introduction. If you go on to a, a jobs website, let's say, and you see a web development job that's charging, uh, well, let's forget about price. Let's say you, you look for a web development job that is for a large corporation, say a bank or something like that. There is today probably, I would say, about a over 60% chance that the job in question will say that they use Agile. Now, Agile is a management methodology or a project management methodology that some IT teams use to get stuff done. Now, I confess to not being fully aware with all of the intricacies of Agile, but I know enough about it to declare bullshit. And one of the things that well, there's a few things that are hallmarks of Agile. One is they have a variety of their own special words and phrases to describe things that most of us already have words and phrases for. For example, they'll have um, perhaps a meeting maybe in the morning to discuss how every, everything's going and they'll call that a stand-up. Why they don't just call it a meeting? I don't know. Well, actually I do, but I'll let you figure it out. They will um, have maybe a little short burst of activity where they say, right, let's build this or fix this and do that, and then we'll report, uh, or we'll regroup and find out how it went or whatever. They'll call that a sprint. They have um, certain people who play roles within the team, and they have names like Scrum Master. Now, the hilarity of this is that GitHub was recently criticised because GitHub, in their wisdom, decided to change the default name of their branches from master to main. Some woke moron thought that master sounded kind of racist. So they inconvenienced the entire web development world and changed the default branch to main. But meanwhile, the Agile crowd, who, by the way, are really, really frequented by a lot of woke people, they decided they're okay with keeping the word master as long as they're talking about being in charge of people. So they have a scrum master and they have this entire 
philosophy around what they do. And they'll speak about building things with agility and so on. This is Agile. Now, to understand why Agile is bullshit, you have to go back to the... Well, this is going to be a long video. But I'm going to walk you through the different parts of the process and I'm going to open up some challenges for any Agile developers who are listening. Now, a few nights ago, I was visited by a friend of mine who uh, came over to see me, and he's a very cool guy. He's also a project manager. But like most of my friends, actually all of them, because they're incredibly intelligent, he is intelligent enough to separate professional from personal. So it just so happens that he's a project manager who is involved in the agile world. And... Um, we went a little chat and I asked him a question. And I says, look, uh, he told me that he, he, I says, what is project management anyway? What is it you do? He explained how he has qualifications and things like waterfall, he said. And uh, at that point I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set a trap for you. And forgive me if I'm all over the place, but I'll bring this together in a minute. I says, I'm going to set a trap. This question is a trap question. I'm telling you up front that I'm trying to trap you. May I have your permission to set the trap? He said, sure. I says, okay, you've just told me that you're a project manager. You do agile. And um, hello if you're watching, Mark. Yeah, you do agile and all of that stuff. And, uh, and as part of your qualification, you learned uh, about waterfall and stuff like that. I said, can you name a book or a conference or any training course that legitimately focuses exclusively and entirely on waterfall? And to his credit, because he's a very cool guy, he paused and thought about it and he said, I can't. Simple as that. And I said, you may relax, there is, you know, no, no need to worry, the trap is now over, and thank you very much. You see, I knew that he wouldn't be able to name any conference, or boot camp, or guild, or association, or podcast, or YouTube channel, or pamphlet, nothing, no governing body, nothing. It does not exist. Waterfall does not exist. And some of you are saying, what on earth is waterfall? Well, allow me to explain. Let's imagine that you have a large company, such as a bank or something, and you need an IT team, just part of life, right? And let's suppose that I am some sort of agile evangelist. Perhaps I am an IT manager or a project manager, or maybe somebody who's in the business of, you know, being the scrum master or whatever. And I know that you're looking for an IT team. Well, I might say to you, um, you know, one of the problems with IT teams, Mr. Bank, is that IT teams traditionally use the waterfall methodology. And I'm doing that because the waterfall methodology means that when a project is declared, they go from step one to step two to step three, step four, step five, like so. They say it's like a waterfall. I think it's a terrible analogy. But because waterfalls can change direction and things, you know, there's, there's randomness there. But they suggest that throughout the 70s, maybe in the 80s, maybe even a little bit beyond, that IT teams use this waterfall method where they clearly define something step by step by step and they seldom communicate with the client. And then at the end of the project, when the project's finished, they will produce documentation and say, here you go, client. And uh, again, you're the banker and I'm trying to pitch you. So I'll say, well, banker, um, 
you know, normal IT teams use this uh, agility thing, uh, not agility, pardon me, waterfall. They go from step to step to step and, you know, there's problems with it because there's no flexibility whatsoever. You don't get any updates as to what's going on and um, it takes a long time. And I might say to you as an agile guy, hey, bank manager, why don't you hire a team that uses agile? You can have scrum masters, stand up sprints and all of that other stuff. And you, as the bank manager, may say, well, what exactly does this all uh, mean? This agile stuff, what does it mean? And you say, bank manager, your problems are solved. When you go with agile, far from being left in the dark with some sequential process with a finish point away in the future, it's not how we do things with agile. Instead, we believe in producing stuff as quickly as possible with maximum, maximum communication, maximum accountability. You, bank manager, or whomever is in charge of the project, will be kept entirely in the loop from step one to the very finish line. And if there's any changes to ma be made, not only will that be okay, it will be welcome. This is the essence of Agile. And it's a very tempting proposition for business owners out there, and many have fallen for it. Now, I've already given you one of the problems with this. As I said to my friend the other day, because he was a freelancer, you know, he started off many years ago uh, doing PHP. He knows the marketplace. He knows what it's like to run a web development agency. And I said, Mark, you know the game here. There's actually a very special phrase for web developers who practice a sort of workflow that involves getting a crystallized spec, working from start all the way to the end, and then producing documentation with hardly any communication with the client in between. We have a word that describes that type of developer, don't we, Mark? And the word is an unemployed developer. Any developer, and I've been doing this since 1996, I've probably built more sites than you, you school leaver. And anybody who goes into the web development game and says, I'm going to get a project, I'm going to go all the way to the finish line with this crystallized structure, write documentation at the end and seldom communicate with the client, they'll get fired in a friggin' heartbeat. That's the marketplace. That has always been the marketplace. So you don't have to go to any developer worth their salt and say to them, hey, would you be okay communicating regularly with the client? Would that be okay? You don't need to go to a professional developer and say, hey, developer, would you be okay with uh, the idea of flexibility and stuff like that? You don't need to go to any professional developer. I don't care if you get a developer in friggin' India. You do not need to say to the developer in India, hey, guy in India, is there any chance that you could prioritize getting stuff done before documentation? You pick any developer in all of India or the Philippines or here in the land of hope and glory. And I guarantee that developer will look at you as if you're a nutcase. I have never met a solitary developer who works like that, ever. Never met that person. And again, to the little school leaver watching, who's thinking, well, you know, I, yeah, the funny guy, <laughs> funny guy, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, but I, you know, it's kind of, you know, get stuff done, get stuff done. Okay, you little child, get your agile trainer on here and let me ask them to their face, 
Show me the Waterfall Conference. Where's the Waterfall Podcast? I'd like to go listen to that. No, there is no conference, there is no podcast, because no such thing exists. And it never did. So Agile is founded on a pack of lies. Let's be very clear about that as a start point. Now I'm super researched. Don't waste your time going to Google and search for waterfall course and say, oh, well, there's one. I caught the guy out. I'm very smart and I'm very well researched. I looked into this. I took the time and I actually did find one or two jokers who had the audacity. One of them had a seven hour course teaching waterfall. And you think, okay, well, there's somebody teaching it. You look a little bit further. I guarantee that same joker is teaching Agile. Even if you search for Learn Waterfall on Google, the results that come back are Learn Agile. So, my friends, the Agile evangelists have literally created a problem out of thin air, a problem that does not exist, and they've given that problem a name. They've called it Waterfall, terrible name. And then they've produced a solution. And along the way, they've made themselves self-appointed governing bodies and all of that. Now, do you see when I did this face, right? The kind of angry face like that. You see the face? You see the angry face? Some of you are thinking, well, that's a little bit harsh. He's going a little bit unhinged today. Is that not the word that you like? What's the guy's name? Who's the guy who was the developer who quit to start up the fake charity? Ah, whatever. They like to say that I'm unhinged, you know? Well, maybe I'm being a little bit unhinged today. Am I bugging you? Am I bugging you? <laughs> well, the fact of the matter is it is founded on a pack of lies. Moreover, to anyone who thinks that I am unhinged and seeming a little bit aggressive about this, it's because right here on YouTube, I'm not going to find the clip because I simply cannot be bothered. I've seen footage of, what's his name? Is it Bob Martin? Uncle Bob, as he calls himself. I think we can rightfully call him one of the founders of Agile, literally. And there's uh, footage of him in a debate where he says, you know, if you don't do, oh, I forgot about testing. He says, if you, if you don't do test-driven development, then uh, my thesis is that you are not a professional. This is his words, not mine. So, Bob Martin, uh, and there's not a single person watching this video who can tell me what he has actually built, by the way. <laughs> Bob Martin thinks that I'm not a professional. Tell Bob Martin, and I'm going to stay professional during this podcast. I'm not going to, uh, this video, I'm not going to launch any personal insults. Tell Bob Martin to come and join me on a live stream, and I will take him to school. I'll even help him if you're watching Bob. I'll tell you what my first question will be. My first question will be. Why should anybody listen to you? Why? Is it because you're over the age of 21, like me? Is that why? Is that why we should listen to you? Is it because you worked for a large corporation sometime? Would you like to share CVs and see who has played the game at the highest level? You child. You company man. And how dare you come on and say that people are not professional unless they do things your way? I looked a little bit into the history of Agile, and it turns out that it was basically a bunch of middle-aged American guys who met in a hotel, I believe it was in Colorado. They must have found a spare room with a whiteboard, had a good old conversation about IT, and they emerged with a thing called Agile. And as far as I can tell, some of them who were at that event, I think there was about seven of them, I'm not sure, but some of them were not even into it. And they've gone on the record as saying, 
we never meant this to get turned into some big formalised structure with governing bodies and certification and all of that. What's going on here? And that's pretty much the history. And the funny thing about it is that if you are as thoroughly researched as me, you see, even though I do a Columbo routine I'm, and pretend to be a bungling idiot, I'm actually quite smart. And I know, for example, that a great deal of the material that is being pushed by the Agile Evangelists was actually stolen from Toyota. It was stolen from a book called The Toyota Way. And if you give me half a minute, I'll remember the name of the guy who wrote it. Was it... Um, I'm thinking it was Lance Lovejoy or something, but it might not be. Anyway, it was the book The Toyota Way. Maybe I'll cheat and look that up. But if you get a hold of that book, look through that. This, all of this stuff is management principles that were invented by the company Toyota back in the 70s. They had different phrases. But uh, you don't need to go to agile people to get that type of advice, to get those types of ideas. It was all done before. No certification required. Hey, you doing the seminar? Step off the stage. Your services are not required. So, I hope you're with me so far. To recap, Agile is founded on a pack of lies. It was invented by a bunch of middle-aged American dudes, and I love America, but I'm just saying it's a fact, right? It was invented by a bunch of American dudes. As far as I can tell, those who were in the room at the time were not all down with the idea. Uh, a couple of them made fortunes out of it. They created a problem that doesn't exist and called it waterfall. It literally doesn't exist. They stole ideas from Toyota and they turned a full curriculum into something that requires little more than a 10 minute pep talk. <laughs> Funny, you know, I once recorded 115 videos for the martial artist Tommy Carruthers. You can look him up. And he teaches Jeet Kune Do. It's the martial art invented by Bruce Lee. Now, I'm not a martial artist, but I love this. I mean, I was just recording a video. I did the website, right? right recording the videos. And um, I thought it was fantastic because Jeet Kune Do, quick martial arts lesson. It was like if somebody comes at you, and I used to do this as a party piece. People thought I was a ninja. <laughs> I remember a guy said to me one time, I won't say his name in case he's watching, but I met a guy I work with, he's a big guy, you know, he's a big dude, right? Big. And he says to me, um, yeah, he says, you know, uh, my friends call me Tyson. <laughs> I says, why? Why did they call you Tyson? And he's, he's a big dude, you know, he's big. And he says, well, I was at the casino the other night. Somebody was being rude with her with her girlfriend or whatever, you know, he's misbehaving. He says, I just headed over and I just knocked him out. Yes, yeah, so people call me Tyson, you know, they, that's why they call me Tyson. I said, okay, no problem. Nice to meet you, Mr. Tyson. Mm -hmm. Like this. Maybe I've got a picture of him, actually. Anyway, uh, I said that and then I said to him, and we were outside at the time, just, you know, Cigarette break. I don't smoke, but I like to get outside, you know. I'm just chatting. I say, okay, they call you Tyson. Interesting. I says, um, punch me. He goes, <laughs> what? I said, I'd like you to attack me. Don't worry. You have my permission. We're friends. We haven't fallen out. And this guy's this, you know. Shaving head and everything. Scary, dude. I says, it's absolutely fine. Don't worry, attack me. You know, just come over and punch me. I, I'd like you to do that, please, Mr. Tyson. And uh, he's like, I'm not, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Why do I, I don't want to get, I says, don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. And by now, and now there's a crowd watching. <laughs> he's like, you sure? I says, yeah. Now, he was probably never going to come and swing at me full on, but I knew exactly what was going to happen. 
I stood back, maybe about seven or eight foot. I says, go. This guy's way bigger. I'm only five foot eight, you know. And sure enough, he said, okay. And he came forward. And as he came forward and did this, I leaned back. And I know that my leg's out of shot here. But I straightened my leg. And as he's coming towards, I straightened my leg and I rested my foot on his kneecap and stopped as he came forward. And his foot's bent. There's mechanics here, right? Which I'm not able to show you. And as I did that, and my, my foot, I could have straightened it and broken his kneecap. And because it was fast, <laughs> because he, he stepped forward and, and I was fast. And so because of the momentum, he kind of stepped forward on that and he carried forward, but I never followed through, but his face was there. And I says, I could have broke your fucking knee right there. And I said it like that, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously. So you're like, really? Yeah. And he was like, holy moly. And from that moment onwards, they thought that I was a ninja. <laughs> I mean, they thought I was a ninja. And they, uh, they'd be asking me for tips and stuff. And, you know, they, they thought... They thought I was something that I'm not. But my friends, what they failed to realise is that I'm no martial artist, I'm no hard man or anything like that. I just understand the, you know, a few basic laws of mechanics. You see, I was using my longest weapon against the nearest target, his knee. I knew that in order for Tyson to punch me, he would have to step forward. And in order for him to step forward and do that, I don't even care about his hands. He has to have his knee, help me out, He-Man. He has to have his knee forward, you see? I knew it in advance. And all I had to do was invite him over, wait for the moment the knee was in place, and then break his knee, and it was over. And I've seen one fight in the town, a guy going against an entire team, and the guy did this, and boom, dude hits the deck, and everyone's like, holy moly. This stuff works. I picked this up from Tommy Carruthers. I'm giving you the name. When I recorded those 115 Jeet Kune Do training videos and entirely by accident, I learned about martial arts. <laughs> it's crazy, right? I'm just the guy doing the video. But, you know, you listen and you pick it up. But I noticed something really interesting. And this takes us back to the Agile thing. Because there's a reason why I'm telling you this. What I've just told you there is taken straight from Bruce Lee's fighting method. Okay, I, I, longest weapon, nearest target, straight like All of that stuff came out in the early 70s, uh, late 60s even. And Bruce Lee wrote about all of this. And it probably came out even before then. But here's the thing. When I started looking into this Jeet Kune Do as I was doing these hundred and odd lessons and I'm, again, I'm going to be giving you far too much information here as usual. But I noticed that the entire martial art of Jeet Kune Do could be summed up with four moves. I could give you pretty much the whole curricul curriculum. I could teach you watching how to win in a fight against 90% of opponents, including Tyson. I could show you how to win against 90% of people, and all I would have to do is teach you four moves. I've given you one of them. Would you like another one? Okay, here's another. Finger jab. Okay? More reach than a punch. Eyeball. Blah, 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 blah. Right? So there's only four of them. And... That's a problem if you're somebody who teaches that martial art for a living. Because how do you charge a monthly fee of? <laughs> how do you keep this going for years and years and years? If there's no belt system, and Bruce Lee did not have a belt system, he um, had no belt system, he didn't have any competitions or anything. There's basically just four moves, and um, that's your whack. How can you turn that into a curriculum? How can you earn a living? Well, 
You know, I just had a thought there. You could take somebody who goes to Tommy Carruthers' class for five years, and um, Tommy Carruthers is a good martial artist, right? Or you could take somebody who just learns those same four moves for five years, the one who learns the four moves, moves for five years, probably on his own, will be better at fighting than the guy who faffs about in a club for five years. And here's why. The people training and teaching have to earn a living. So what I observed when I was doing all of these martial arts videos is that once you've covered the basics, strongest side forward, longest weapon, nearest target, straight line, and so on, once you've covered the basics, which is, takes hardly any time at all, there's nothing to teach. So what would happen in the case of Tommy Carruthers is he would revert to teaching traditional Chinese martial arts and stuff that, frankly, nobody's ever going to use. They call it modified Wing Chun, and they teach things like trapping, and they have names like Lap Sao and Chi Sao, Sao and so on, all these kind of Chinese phrases. And they'll just teach everybody all of this stuff because now they have a curriculum. Now they've got something that they can teach and a reason to take that monthly payment out of the old bank account every month. And so the great segue is complete. This, my friends, is precisely, of course, what's happening with Agile. You see, the principles of bringing a product to the market quickly, communication, flexibility, not prioritizing documentation, and so on. These are all things that could be taught in a heartbeat. Everybody knows it. But the trouble is, if you're one of these agile types, one of those who earn a living out of this bullshit, how can you earn a living out of that? They've got the same problem as the Jeet Kune Do teachers. It's so simple that there's not really much to say. And so they'll do podcasts and conferences and blah, 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 blah. Oh, we're good. We're good. Oh, and they argue amongst themselves. Oh, well, Charlie there says that he's doing agile, but it's not real agile. No, 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 no. We, we, we do real agile. Let me tell you about it for the next three hours. And that is what's going on. And it's the biggest scam probably in all of IT. I would say it's the biggest scam in the IT industry. The biggest scam in the IT industry. And one of the things that I'm, go I'm going to start wrapping this up. Um, well, I'm going to, first of all, I'll, I'll do two things to wrap this up. I want to um, discuss how this came to be. How did this hot air, this bullshit, end up becoming an industry norm? And then finally, I'm going to leave with a few suggestions because I will never offer a criticism without offering a solution. And I'll give you that at the end of this. But first of all, we have to discuss how did this happen? How did we end up here? Well, the... The universities have a lot to answer for. My own university, Glasgow Uni, for example, they have a computer science course. And as far as I can tell, they don't even teach PHP. So there's a server-side technology that's very easy to learn that gets used on approximately 78% of websites, and they don't teach it. And I remember when I had my web development agency up and running. I remember I had to advertise for the position of web developer one time because I had a few employees. And I remember I got 800 CVs arrived and tons of them were from Glasgow University graduates. And I looked through, and I, I graduated from Glasgow Uni, by the way. What a waste of five years that was. I looked through all of these CVs, and as I was looking through all the uni CVs, all the skills they had were utterly irrelevant. They were learning ASP and who knows what spreadsheets. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just, it was just 
not relevant at all. And it was so bad. I actually wrote to the uni and I was saying, I've just had my time wasted looking through all of your crap CVs and you haven't churned out anyone who has skills that are relevant to this marketplace. What are you playing at? I actually sent them that message. I'm waiting on a response, Glasgow Uni. And so, the traditional education system has been totally, totally wrong-footed by the internet. Because, as anybody knows, with the exception of the Trongate framework, if you're a really great developer and you stop learning for, say, six months, you've fallen behind. You know, think about this. Think about what web development was like one year ago. Just one year. Think about how you worked one year ago. I guarantee it was radically different from the way you work today. Many of you today use things like ChatGPT, for example. Can you believe it? That was not even around one year ago. One year ago, you were probably faffing about on Stack Overflow. Look at how much things have changed. And that is the IT industry. And technologies change really, really quickly, except Trongate, which does change, but with stability as a priority. But technology changes so fast, everything is constantly in a state of, let's say, change. And the traditional university systems don't know what to do. Because it takes them a solid, let's say, year. I mean, think about the situation that traditional universities have, right? It might take them a year to come up with a curriculum for a technology. Let's say somebody invents the ultimate programming language. We'll call it language X. And it's taking the world by storm, right? It's getting used everywhere. It's going to take a traditional university about one year to create a curriculum out of that. Realistically, that might be six months for the lecturers to get up to speed with the technology. Then they've got to come up with course materials and all of that. Then they've got to come up with exams and ways of formally certifying and testing and all of that. So it's about a year. However, it's even worse than that. Because when you think of it, they've got a sort of marketplace lag. So if somebody develops programming language X today, it's the ultimate programming language, everybody's going to use it, right? Well, that's going to take a bit of time to get some traction. And then we need to wait on the primogen and all of the other usual suspects, web dev simplified or whomever, to go and do YouTube videos and all that and say, oh, this is the best thing ever. Then we need to wait for all of the forums to kick off and everything. And then you add all of that on top of one day a university lecturer says, maybe I should look at this. Now the unis are really screwed. Because in actuality, it's probably a minimum, minimum of a two-year lag from takes the marketplace by storm to university now teaching it in some formalised manner. A two-year lag at best. In reality, it's probably more like a four-year lag. The point is that the traditional education systems are not fit for purpose when it comes to IT. They have produced nothing. Uh, university of British Columbia took over Codeigniter and they just ruined it, right? I mean, <laughs> academic institutions are just not very good at IT, you know? And so... What happened is, is the universities are churning out people with letters after their names, like, you know, BSc, Bachelor of Science, and MEng, and all of that. And these people are qualified, and they've done degrees, they've been well-intentioned, and they arrive at the workplace without any clue about the marketplace. They don't even know the, they don't even know the basics of SEO. They think the SEO is a plugin. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They think it's a plugin instead of the truth, which is that SEO is actually not about a plugin. It's not about adding something to a site. It's about taking stuff off. And so, 
what happened is, and those of us who have been around the workplace, we've all seen the guy. Have we not all seen the guy? Let's call the guy Nigel. We've all seen the Nigel guy in the workplace who sits with a set of headphones on like that. He seems to be looking at a command line interface usually and he never talks to anybody. Nobody knows what he does. He's not very friendly. Doesn't really remember laughter. And that son of a bitch is charging 75 grand a year for the privilege. And whatever he does for a living, that unproductive waste of space, whatever he does, apologies for my watch and my phone, whatever he does, he's made himself a single point of failure. Hello? I'm good, how are you? I am. Let's do lunch. Can I hang up without saying goodbye like an American in a movie? Can I hang up without saying goodbye like an American in a movie? Ideally some sort of crime fighting drama. Okay. Good. I'll see you at one. So as I was saying... What are we talking about here anyway? Who are you? Oh, Agile. That's right. Agile's bullshit. So, the universities churn out these uh, useless characters who charge very high salaries, who produce nothing, do nothing, and they're just a waste of space. And what Agile did to Agile's credit is Agile dealt with that problem. They dealt with that problem brilliantly. Because it's very difficult for Nige to continue his charade if he's suddenly doing stand-ups and scrums and all of that and bowing down to the scrum master, right? So this is the problem, I suppose, a legitimate problem that Agile addressed. Agile, and you know, am I not a fair critic? Agile identified that problem and said, we can take care of Nigel for you. And to a business owner, that's music to their ears. I'll give you a story, you know, I am um, a few years ago, there was a guy who managed the football team Celtic, I can't remember his name, anyway, he was a very famous football manager, and I remember a number of years ago, uh, an agency hired me, uh, I was looking at the job market, and I noticed that the agencies were paying good rates for developers. And at the time, I thought, well, okay, and a contract came up. It was about, a, I think it was just a one-month or a two-month gig, but with a good daily rate, you know. And it was to build a website for this football manager for, for some agency or whatever, through a recruitment agency, I know. Anyway, I got the gig and I turned up. And I remember I got interviewed by the managing director and by Nige, that guy, you know. And uh, they got me... They got me in there, and as we got there, I noticed that Nige is sitting with the headphones on, and uh, he was an obnoxious, uh, incredibly rude person, and very, very unfriendly, and uh, on a, I think it was on day two, I said something to him, and he gave me a little smug remark, you know, get on with your work or something, whatever it was, and I remember I said, I'm going to have your ass. This is a dude who had just interviewed me. <laughs> Here's why IT managers don't like me. I remember thinking, I'm going to have your ass. And so what I did is I was building an online shop. And uh, the way that I had his ass was every 20 minutes, I would shout really loud. I'd shout, just to let you know, that's the uh, ad items page done. Now, 15, 20 minutes later, just to let you know, that's the checkout done. Just to let you know, that's the customer internal messaging system built. Just to let you know, that's me finish the order tracking. And I'm shouting it across the room. And the managing director's gone, okay. And all day I'm just going, just to let you know, that's me finish that. Okay, just to let you know, that's me launch the site. 
So I'm being really vocal, and that's me done that, that's me done that, that's me done that. Meanwhile, the playground bully is sitting with his headphones on, not saying a word, and kind of being menacing and bullying. And I thought, I'm going to outshine you like, like nothing since Jason and the Argonauts. And uh, <laughs> I'm just like, yep, yeah, ask me finish that, ask me finish that. On day three, day three, the managing director came up to me. It was a lady, actually. She says, can we have a meeting? I said, sure. She says, I've decided to fire Nige. <laughs> How do you like me now? How do you like me now? And he got his ass fired. So, it's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting how we have these different solutions for different problems. The Agile correctly identified the Nige problem and said, Oh, Agile, blah, 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 blah. The web developer extraordinaire identified the same problem and I just get the sucker fired. That's kind of how I like to work, you know? Anyway, there is a question here that I'm starting to think about. And the question is, do we need an alternative to Agile? And I think we do. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm having a hard enough time going up against uh, uh, Lara Slow, you know. but. I do think that there's a need for an alternative to Agile. There has to be another way because ultimately everybody loses. The fact of the matter is that instead of hiring one or two competent developers, business owners are now employing an entire team. And again, going back to my friend Mark, hello Mark, who is living and breathing this stuff, he says to me the other day, you know, Agile. He says it doesn't make it doesn't make teams faster. It just gives them more capability. You know? He says it just gives them more capability. And I just thought, well, if that ain't a pile of bullshit, I don't know what is. You see, just like the Trongate framework, I don't give a rat's ass if people say it's good or it's bad or anything. On the measurables like benchmarks, we win. So I'm not interested in no more capability. If I'm hiring an IT team, I want stuff done. Simple as that. And um, Agile's just not doing it at all. It's, it's Instead of getting stuff done quickly, you get teams of school leavers who have built F all, done F all. And so it's very, very common for business owners to suddenly find themselves in a position where they're paying maybe half a million per year for this team to go have lots of meetings and they hide their incompetence by seeking refuge in the realms of things like um, unit testing, t -t 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 testing and stuff like that, you know? So they're really big on that. Oh, how do you test your stuff? Unit testing, you know? And of course, they are so incompetent that an answer like, well, I use Mocha or whatever is enough for them to say, okay, great, you're one of us. So clueless, so clueless, you know, um, and this is what's happening. So business owners are getting very little done. They're spending fortunes. Developers are losing out, of course. I have a database because I, I used to employ somebody to apply for web development jobs on my behalf. And it sounds a bit mad, but I was doing that up until 2012. And I have the salaries going back to 2012. And if you take the London area, for example, it was very, very common for PHP developers to be paid 65 grand a year in 2012. Today, that same PHP developer will get maybe 30 grand. I mean, I've seen the jobs, I've seen this. I know there's a few well-paid ones, but I'm just saying that that's my observation for the London area. And of course, what has happened? Has everybody become stingy? No, they haven't. What's happened is, is that the salary that would have gone to the developer is now being spread out 
among a bunch of school leavers who go by the title Scrum Master or something like that. So this is detrimental to business owners, it's detrimental to development as a whole, and it's the biggest scam in all of IT. Bring your Scrum Master here, bring your Agile Trainer, I would love to have a conversation with Bob Martin. Bring them here, I promise to make them welcome and I promise to conduct myself professionally. I don't think they're going to show up though, because the fact of the matter is, I am right about this, just as I was right about frameworks. Now, where does that leave the business owner? What would my advice be to the business owner who is thinking about getting involved in IT, maybe thinking about starting an IT team up? What should that business owner do? Well, I've identified two enemies. One is Nige, the uni graduate who does F all, sits with headphones on, doesn't communicate and doesn't produce. And the other enemy, which is even more costly, is the team of morons who go under the banner of Agile. Built F all, done F all. That's the two enemies. How does the business owner protect themselves from that? Well, the clue is in the question. I said, a business owner who's thinking about getting involved with IT, that is the answer. That's right. A wise man once said, questions are the answers. And maybe it's true. Once again, I said, thinking about getting involved in IT, that's the answer. I've been around the block and I've worked with companies who started from ground zero and made fortunes. I've worked with a lot of companies who lost fortunes. I even did some work for one company with a market cap of five billion and they went under. I've played the game at all sorts of levels and I've built websites for Joe the Plumber and everybody in between. And here's what I can tell you. The business owners who get involved in this game and who go on and make fortunes, they get involved. They participate. They don't necessarily learn how to code. They don't necessarily set up debugging for 12 hours a day. But they take an interest. They take an interest in technology. They take an interest in databases. They take an interest in hosting. They, they are very familiar with the vocabulary of things like hosting and bandwidth. They know about AdWords and all of that type of stuff. The business owner who succeeds makes it their business to know about this stuff. Now, if you are a business owner, you're going to have to take an interest. You're going to have to get involved. That's your solution. If you think that you can hire some agile team or some nige from the uni or even somebody like me and say, well, that's my problem solved. Next, I'm off to the beach. No, it doesn't work like that. Even if you're lucky enough to find somebody like me, you've just hired a single point of failure. Because what happens if I get struck by lightning? You see, this is the truth. And that's what you get on this channel. So business owners have to take an interest. I think about people like Andy Bell, who turns out watched one or two of my videos. I found out the other day. He's the head honcho of First Vehicle Leasing. You can look them up. And I've been in his house and when you go in, it's a big, he has a big massive TV screen with all charts and everything showing the, the, the visits and the conversions and everything. He knows his business inside out and he is involved, actively involved. He can sit down with a developer and have a long conversation about PHP and databases and everything. He can sit with an AdWords expert, have the same conversation, or an SEO expert and have the same conversation. He knows about this. He knows about the design process. He introduced me to the website 99designs. And so he took an interest. Now, you don't need to listen to this guy and believe everything he says. The good news is we already have examples of successful project management. They're right in front of your face. If you're on YouTube, go search for Steve Jobs brainstorming or Steve Jobs next 
team. You see footage of the late Steve Jobs, voted best entrepreneur of the last hundred years on CNBC, and you see him interacting with programmers and his IT team. Look at how he conducts himself. Look at how he sets clear deadlines and doesn't accept failure as an option. It's all there. It's all right in front of you. And you don't have to go hiring some agile team. You don't need some certification or something. You just need to stop being lazy. And that's the truth. And you look at any company, I guarantee any company who's doing well, look at Elon Musk. Now, there may be questions about whether Elon Musk is uh, the genius that he is portrayed as being, but one cannot deny he's intimately involved with the manufacturing process of his cars, with the rockets and all of that stuff. He even says that he's the engineer who designs the things. I don't know if that's true or not, but what's beyond debate is that Elon Musk is on the front line and involved. He knows about the stuff. And you can look at any of the large companies, the Microsofts, the Facebooks and all of that. Even if you go outside of the realms of IT, start looking at companies like McDonald's and all of that. Look at how strong they are at IT. I guarantee if you sit down with the head honchos of those businesses, they will know about IT. So to the business owner, you have to learn about this stuff and stop being lazy. And on that note, if this video gets more than 50 thumbs ups between now and, well, let's just say 30 days. If this video gets more than 50 thumbs ups in the next 30 days, my next video will be naming and shaming the worst CEO that I've ever worked with. I'll have his name on the title. I'll have his company on the name of the title, everything. I'm going to name and shame the guy and I'm going to explain step by step why this is the worst CEO I've ever dealt with. I want more than 50 thumbs ups for that information now. And in doing this, I'm not out to wreck anybody's career. I'm out to show you things being done wrong so that maybe you can do them right. Now, I hope you got some value from this. If you did, Leave that thumbs up and give me a comment. Let me know that you're alive. Let me know what you think. I'm interested in your thoughts. Do you think Agile is a lot of bullshit? Have you ever been part of an Agile team? How did it go? What's your personal philosophy when it comes to managing an IT team? Let me know in the comments. I'm super interested to know. Thank you so much. This was a long one. But I think it had to be said, there is no question, my friends, agile is bullshit.